Uh, thank you, President, uh, Prime Minister. Uh, first of all, let me also thank you for all the efforts that the Slovak Presidency has made uh, in order not just to make it a success, but uh, address uh, the issues uh, that are still pending. And if I may just uh, point out two issues that I will remember from uh, uh, your statement. One is uh, that the domestic political agenda should not dominate over EU-related and common EU interests and affairs. And I think that this is very important, but I need to say that it still prevails. We see it basically on a daily or weekly basis. We see it in the Council, we see it in the Council groups when there are issues addressed, and suddenly we will always have an issue of so-called national interest that will prevail. Whether it is a question of uh, addressing, uh, I mean, uh, uh, opening up of the markets in the railways, whether it's digital, whatever it is, I think that we need to return in this respect to the roots, to the roots that uh, uh, in fact show the ability to address the issues and find, uh, let's say, common basis. The second issue that I will remember is uh, you spoke about the EU being sovereign. If I may say, just add, uh, I think that uh, what we would like to see is an EU that is a strong player. And I think that uh, we need still, uh, in a major way, contribute to it. You have also referred to the American presidential elections. That is maybe a bit of an uncertainty. We don't know yet what the policies will be. We heard a lot of statements that uh, do create concerns. I would wait for the policies. And at the same time, we have uh, threats uh, that are from time to time expressed uh, from Russia. I mean, these two are an invitation to the European Union to be that strong player, to be able to address the issues that are not dependent on the Americans, nor on the Russians. I mean, uh, we, we focus at the trade agenda, of course, I mean, uh, we know what happened with TPP. We don't know yet uh, what will happen with uh, TTIP, but we don't have to wait. On one hand, we can negotiate with other countries, but at the same time, the new administration will come in place and we should set a positive agenda. We should be the ones that would be co-setting if not setting the agenda. I think we can't be caught unprepared in this respect. Uh, another remark uh, already has been referred to the migration crisis, sometimes too little, too slow, but we are progressing. I agree with you. But I think that well, we can't hide the fact that what is happening today in Turkey is completely unacceptable. This is a question of our values, and I think that we can hardly continue negotiations, accession negotiations with Turkey unless, I mean, we see a reshift in the course where Turkey is heading. At the same time, I'm in favor of setting the conditions, as we have said in the European Parliament, and reopening the negotiations once, let's say, the uh, situation will progress in, uh, in that uh, country. Values. Values, I think, apart from what I have said, are key. And I want to say that uh, we need to measure with the same measurement everyone. I'm glad that you have uh, uh, signed the agreement with Cuba, but at the same time, I would like to see in the future agreements uh, that have the conditionality that in fact provide concessions, but at the same time, there is really a motivation and a progress in those countries concerned. Uh, Prime Minister, one last sentence. I think that I would agree with a lot that you have said. I think that you have a new experience, and I think that on these issues that you have expressed, and some that I have added, we need uh, a recognition champions in the Council to, to move beyond marginal, sometimes very partial, national interests. Thank you.